Hello friends, uh, the other day I was taking a university viva and I asked a student uh, what is the example of counter transport or anti port or exchange. You know second reactive transport has got two types co transport and counter transport. So uh, he said the example is sodium potassium pump. Uh, I was taken aback because first year students generally know that sodium potassium pump is an example of primary active transport. So I just asked him, what is the logic? Why do you say this? He said, two substances going opposite to each other and somewhere the energy is being spent. That's why secondary active transport means energy being spent, so active. And two substances are going opposite to each other is the counter transport or exchange it is called. So secondary active transport, the type counter transport, you know, co and counter. So counter transport, also called as anti port, also called as exchange. So why not sodium potassium pump is an example of exchange or anti port or counter transport? Well, uh, he applied his own logic, but that's not the case as you know, sodium potassium pump is an example of primary active transport. And what is exchange, how it is different from the primary active transport, how the counter transport is different. Okay, in both these cases, there are two substances involved. Uh, I'm talking about the primary active transport example, sodium potassium pump, okay, specifically sodium potassium pump. So in both these cases, two substances are involved and they are going to going opposite to each other and ATP is being spent somewhere. That much is the similarity between the two. Well, but then there are differences and important differences. Let's understand this. Sodium potassium pump, why do we call it primary active transport? Primary, because it uses the ATP directly. There is a, there's a direct breakdown of ATP and that energy is used then and there itself to transport sodium and potassium. Look, here is a pump. I, I hope you can see the diagram clearly. Uh, here is a pump, pump protein or it's also called as ATPase. So it will bind sodium, it will bind potassium or rather I would say sodium binds to it, potassium binds to it and ATP binds to this pump. That ATP will be broken down and the high energy in that uh, high energy bond will be utilized to transport sodium and potassium. Okay, So the first point uh, to be very very clear is ATP is bound to the same protein, ATP is broken down then and there and the energy is used directly for the transport of sodium and potassium. So it should be called as primary active transport. In the case of secondary active transport, that is not the case. Look, there is a primary active transport in the form of sodium potassium pump in the membrane of that same cell. It will perform its function. It will send sodium from inside to outside. That will utilize the ATP, okay, because sodium is going low to high and potassium is also going low to high. So that will utilize ATP directly. Now, it will create the concentration gradient for sodium and utilizing that concentration gradient, another carrier protein will cause movement of sodium and movement of the other substance. So two substances are carried by the secondary active transporter, but it's a carrier protein. Sodium potassium pump or primary active transporter is a pump protein or ATPase. Secondary active transporter is a carrier protein. Structurally, they are different. Second point, very important point. In the case of primary active transport, sodium and potassium are going in the opposite directions, that's fine. But both are going against their concentration gradients. Both sodium and potassium are moving against their own concentration gradients. Sodium is going from inside to outside, means it is going low to high concentration. Potassium is going uh, coming from outside to inside, again from low too high, you know potassium is low on the outside and more, uh, I mean high concentration on the inside. So both sodium and potassium are moving 
against their concentration gradients they both are going from their low to their high concentrations that's not the case in uh, in exchange or counter transport or antiport let's try to understand primary active transporter that is sodium potassium pump has done its job it has sent the sodium from inside to outside utilizing the atp now because of the activity of the sodium potassium pump which is a primary active transport sodium concentration on the outside of the cell increases fine because of the pump it is sending the sodium out so outside concentration of sodium increases which means now there is a concentration gradient getting created for sodium from outside to inside look now because of the activity of the pump sodium will be high on the outside and low relatively low on the inside that means a concentration gradient has been created by the activity of primary active transport now utilizing this concentration gradient utilizing the potential energy stored in this concentration gradient that pull of the concentration gradient will be utilized by the carrier protein to transport two substances one is definitely sodium because it's the sodium's pull which is being used so obviously sodium will be transported and some other substance will also be transported utilizing that potential energy in the case of co transport both sodium and the other substance will go in the same direction means they both will enter the cell in the case of counter transport sodium will enter the cell because it is now coming from high to low it has the concentration gradient for that but the other substance in the case of exchange will go from inside to outside because it is it has to move from low to high concentration so i have given the example of ncx sodium calcium exchanger in the case of heart muscle myocardial cell it brings the sodium in from high to low and it uh, bring uh, it sends the calcium from inside to outside okay now what was the important difference in the case of sodium potassium pump both sodium and potassium are going against their own concentration gradients both of them in the case of secondary active transport and particularly the count or co or counter both cases sodium will move from high to low and the other substance will move from its low to its high concentration see ncx sodium calcium exchanger calcium is being sent from inside to outside means from low to high so in real sense it is the active transport for calcium because calcium is going from its low to its high concentration sodium is coming from high to low so these are the important differences when you say secondary active transport two substances move if they are going in same direction and they are entering the cell it will be co-transport they are going opposite to each other they are called it's called as counter transport or antiport or exchange but the point to be remembered is in this case one of them is going high to low and that is sodium and that going high to low the potential energy in that will be utilized by the carrier to send the other substance low to high you know it is grabbing the Uh, opportunity given by the sodium's movement and it is transporting the other substance low to high so that's uh, the difference between the sodium potassium pump where both of them are going low to high their own concentration gradients uh, but in this case only one is going low to high that is calcium so for calcium particularly we will call it secondary active transport that's the difference between a sodium potassium pump and a secondary active counter transport